activas. I just wanted to um, come back with a, a, a video about um, today. I thought I'd start an embroidery project, a cross stitch project, and it was one of the ones I've unboxed, unwrapped on here. It is a uh, it's a bookmark, and it has love to read. It says, um, drink tea and read books. <laughs> That's pretty much me. So I thought, and the cups are all cool. I thought I'd start that and um, show you how I start a project. Uh, there's still so much to do, but you know how it goes. Anyways, to keep my mind off of all those things, to take a break from that, I want to start a mic start my cross stitch project so come on along <laughs> so as you can see I have the uh, project with the teacups I'm going to start on this because it's pretty easy to do uh, to do words and this kit came with a fuzzy full of needles and a needle threader somewhere I thought I had that in there and a ring thimble okay which should fit on the top of your finger and just to review what's in a kit, it gives you the graph instructions on the back. And you saw the picture from the front. I believe this, I'm not exactly sure what I got this for. It's, um, it looks like there's ink in there. I'm not sure, but we'll find out, right? We have a tassel for the bottom on completion. We have the, and I wrapped it around here pretty good here. Okay, we have the plain uh, even weave fabric, and I believe they said it was 14 count, yes. That means there are 14 squares per, um, I believe, per centimeter. You're supposed to use two strands. Embroidery thread comes like this, and it comes, uh, there's six strands at a, at a, in a string. So you have to separate them in order to use them. All right, what I like to do is start in the center of a piece. It's easy to find the center of a piece by folding it one way. And I put a needle there. Okay. That way you don't start too high, you don't start too low. And I've got, oh, there's two of them in here. <laughs> That's why it felt weird. All right. I'm just going to approximate the center going this way for now. Ouch. too sharp. If they're too sharp, they're going to split the thread. Uh, this way, we go half the other way, and I put it dead on. Dead on. Dead on center. All right, let me deal with this needle over here. The, the kit I got with a different, this is the one I got with a different kit. Same company, different kit. All right, I'll take the pom-pom of needles out here. Put this through in a different way. These are more rounded tip needles and that's kind of what I would like to use. I use a thimble on this finger because I'm usually pushing pushing it through with that one. Pull out a more rounded tip. Yes, much nicer. I'm going to end up doing this in the, the uh, the plane, I believe. All right, so now on the schematic, on the graph, I find the center of this piece. This is 30, so about 15 is the center here. And I do believe I have a marker here. One, two, three, four, five. That's dead center here. And going this way, it's a hundred and one, two, three, four. So 52, 52 is the center here, 
which means it will come right here is the center. So you can start one above or one below. Um, yep, right about there. Can you see that? I just made a, a tiny little mark in the middle of my picture, and it's really hard to see because it's in the middle of the gray. All right, so now I'm going to figure out what thread that is. It is a gray. I think it's number two. Number two on here is a pink. And that's not right because it should be a... Um, no, wait a minute. Yeah, it's gray. Should be the right color. 415. It's 1 to 10. Number 1? Yeah, number 1. I'm sorry I'm confusing you. <laughs> Alright, number 1. I pulled the number 1 off the palette. It gives the DMC color number on the edge here. So I'm going to write that on the top of the palette as well. If I have any thread left over, if I decide to keep it, I don't know. Okay, I'm pulling it out of number one. All right. I like to cut it in half because it's too long in one shot. I don't have my embroidery scissors with me, but I'll use that one. All right, and I'll put this hunk back, the one half, okay, I'll take the other half and split it. Usually there's one end that frays a bit more than the others. Maybe I can pull you in just a little bit closer for this. Usually there is one end here that frays a little bit more than the others, and I'll try to pick out two that seem like they're next to each other. start splitting but you'll notice that it's twisting the thread at the same time and if you don't undo that twist you're going to get it knotted up so let's see Come here I pinch it right in the center I'll pull you out a bit again all right I pinch it in the center then I just take it and spread it out Spread out the twist. As best as I'm able. The twist is going to be coming in each of these ends. And the full length of the thread. Sometimes I put one end in my mouth and keep it straight that way. <laughs> but on camera, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> How many of you, if you do cross stitch, how many of you use your mouth to, to either hold a needle or hold the thread temporarily? It's easier that way, you know? Here we go. Let me see. It should be able to just finish, blink, finish off. Now, this is my two strand. I'm going to put my four strand aside. I'm going to take the needle the bigger needle that I picked out and thread it through. Now you can use a needle threader if your eyesight is not perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. And I pull it fairly long in the beginning and straighten it out. Alright, we are not going to make a knot on the underside of this. I think I can make this smaller by you know, bending in a bit here. She's falling off. Yeah, that's good. All right. Now, I read on the pattern. I find the center again. 
I read on the pattern that there is one directly below that center dot. So I'm going to start there. Lengthwise, one directly below that center dot. All right, now I'm going to pull you in so you can see this. All right. So I start now. This is a little upside down for you, but I'm going to I'm going to do it upside down for you. You start at the bottom of the X, and you always go across in the same manner. You will always start from one side to the opposite side. And that way, if you're starting left to right, you always do all your X's left to right then. All right, you have to remember that on the back. All right, I am not going to pull the thread completely through. I'm going to hold that with my fingers underneath there while I complete the stitch. Okay, so it's here. I'm going to go across there. I'm going to keep my finger on the top as well so that it doesn't knot up. I'm going to turn it over again and making sure I'm tucking that extra thread underneath. I go back to the bottom of the X. I'm doing this upside down for you, so. And then I go in the top. So you've managed on the top side to get your stitch. Okay? You got your stitch. And on the bottom side, you now uh, should have had this encapsulated <laughs> underneath there. I had it in the wrong way, but it'll it'll eventually get um, caught up in the threads from the top. Got my tea. <laughs> now it's called counted cross stitch because you have to count the squares over up and down, over and under, where you want to stitch um, with the pattern. So what I'm going to do here is this is the stitch that I made first. If I ever want to use this pattern again, I'm not going to mark it up too bad, but sometimes I use a highlighter uh, or you can scan this in and use a program that where you can highlight what you've done. But if you try to keep it at the same angle all the time, you'll be able to see that. So the one right above it is, let's see, I usually go top down. Which way do I want to go this time? I'll do all these around the center so that I know where I'm at. Okay, so this is one up and one over. All right, so I will be starting at the top of this one, the top of the one we just did. Oops. No, I won't be there because it, that was where I ended. Don't do that. All right. Then I'll start with these two. But I don't go out of the same hole. There we go. All right. What I like to do, if you have more than one to do, I like to do it if you have more than one to do, is do all one way first, so there's only two stitches at a time here. One. I go down again, because you're going to start at the bottom of the stitch again, and go over one. So you have all of the crosses going one way before you come back and do the second part of the X going the other way. So, see, I'll put it there. I'll go back. I don't think this is dark enough gray. Go back to, into the top of that thread. Go back into the bottom of the first one you did. Okay, this is upside down for me, but yeah. Alright. And then to the top of that first one you did to complete it. Are we there? We have one here, two here. I'm going to do this other one right there now. I can go back and do that because the thread isn't coming in and out of the same hole. And I just did something I told you guys not to do. Ugh, 
Come on now. Come on. Take that mistake out. All right. I told you to start at the bottom. All right. Always go the same way first. All right. And the second way. Bottom and top. I'm going to check myself. After I do a few stitches, I check myself to see if I have the right amount going here. Okay, so let's check it back to our pattern here. We did this one first. We came over and did these two. And then we went back and got this one. Now we need the one right above the blank space. Can you see that? I hope you can. There's one at the bottom. There's a two space and one. Now I need one right over that space. So, that's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> it's very stiff fabric, and I guess it is because it's... Because it's uh, a bookmark. It's going to need to be stiff. All right. There. Now we have the stitch right above it. I'm going to turn this over now and see if we linked our thread. Yes. The, the first thread that we used is now pinched between some of the other threads. All right. And that won't come out. It'll get continue to get pinched a little bit in the back, and it's not going to be a big deal. All right. Now where should we go on the pattern? All right. Um... I'm going to go, I think it will be easy to make these two and then link this in. Alright, so I want to go from the one I just did, I'm going to go one up and start one over and then make the two again. So one up, one over. Sorry, it's a little stiff here. Am I still in camera? No. You gotta yell at me when I'm not in camera. It's hard to see at the same time. The fan above me is blowing the plastic around here. Okay. There's two. Again, I'm gonna start at the bottom and go back in the opposite direction. Bottom to top. Bottom. To top. <laughs> when I pull it out, when I, I continue to pull it out, I pinch the bottom of this when I'm pulling because if I don't, thread starts to come out of the needle. If I pinch it there, it can't. So, all right, so back to the pattern again. Right in the middle here, yep. All right, we've done now, we've done our first, our first double, and then the single on the same row. We've gone up and done a double here. So now we're right here. We can do this space. So how many are there in a row? One. Let me count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we want to be on the same level as this middle one. We want to leave the two spaces. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Did I do that right? Oh my god. Those two. No? Let me fix it up. That's all right. Um. Let me 
it over again here so we have the two <laughs> All right just bear with me a moment here Consequences of doing it upside down. <laughs> All right. Now, here we go. So we have the two empty spaces in between those two. We want to start in the row in here and we want to do the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we start here, the bottom again, like you always do. And we're going to count six on the way over. One, bottom to top. And see, this is why you need a more rounded needle. You need to come up in the hole instead of in between the pieces. Unless you're going to be doing half stitches, which I'm not going to be doing in this one. That's number two. Oops. Three. Then you come back, start at the bottom as if you were starting the next stitch, but instead you're going to back, back stitch those six. So it's one, two, three. and six. All right. So now I got this long piece there and we're back up to this one. There's a one, two, three, four, five right above these two. So why don't we do that since we're there? Now, some of you are going to ask me, why can't I widen it to smidge? Why can't I stick down and then instead of going all the way under, just pick up that stitch like that? And you can after a while. Uh, it depends on the fabric that you're using. It depends on the needle that you're using. It depends on how much practice you've had. But you have to be very careful not to split the stitches or get your thread twisted anywhere because it's very easy to do. It gets caught on the corner of a pattern, it gets caught on the corner of the fabric. Okay, so I have one, two, three, I need five, right? 
for. Come on. My fingers are stiff. It's been a while. And five. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to go back that five. Make sure you cross over. Go back in where you were, top to bottom. Just going back the same way you came. All right. And again, you just keep doing that, and it looks like here in the pattern, see this is where I should be right now. Yes, I have the two singles, I have the two doubles, I have the two long ones, one six and one a five. I'm going to start over here and count this one on the top, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it starts two in. So when the second one in, <clears throat> well, no wait, it's going to start four. I'm gonna, I usually start on this end. So four over. And the fourth one over. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I start at the bottom of that one. I'm going to count it again to be sure I got it right. I'm on the bottom of that row. It'll be one, two, three, four, and then five, six. Yes, it'll work. Should be the last one out in the free. Out in the, it's not connected to the others. I have two more. It's going to connect to the others. And this one, I'm coming up. Oops, see that tail's getting shorter again. Okay. When I'm coming up, I don't want to split the stitches I've already made. So. And I'm going to go back. I did two over top of them. So I do those two and continue on and do the rest of the four. Six all together. That's what we counted. Now, <clears throat> you're going to make mistakes. And the best way to undo a mistake is to go underneath and undo it one stitch at a time. When I do my mistake in this one, and trust me, I do, I've been doing this for many years, but I still make mistakes. So don't think just because you might have done this before that you won't make a mistake, because you will. Just because you're a beginner at it doesn't mean that you need to be cross with yourself for making a mistake, because you will. If you're not making mistakes, you're not doing anything. So give yourself a break on that. All right. Now that came through. Now that's that piece. All right. See how it's starting to look like the pattern, hopefully. <laughs> starting to look like the smoke swirling up here. We are up here now. This is where we are at the stitch. We can do the two below, two above, and the one. Or we can do, I think I'm going to do the two below, then the two here, and then this line all the way back and forth. All right. And then I'm going to start you doing the little ones down this way, and then start um, picking it up to the, do the, all the smoke. All right. So I'm going to catch you when I'm done these two and this line right here. I'm going to turn around and face me so I get it right. All right. All right. I'll be back in a moment. Hold on. 
Okay, I wanted to show you uh, the way I'm doing it. Oh, back the way so that you can see it correctly. All right, keeping the needle out of the way. You can see the center down here, right? You can see the double two with the two spaces in the middle. You can see the first six. You can see the next five. You can see the row on top of that. And that has the double two with the empty one in the middle. And then I did the 10 going across that top. Then I came down here and did that one in between. And I started going down this line. And what I noticed is when I got to here, I'm running out of thread. So that means I'm going to show you what to do on the other side. I'm going to pull that stitch completely through. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, <I've laughs> I went in the wrong hole. See? Mistake. I make mistakes so you don't have to. All right, I'm going to pull that out and turn it over. And what you want to do with your thread is you want to feed it back through some of the previous stitches, the backs of some previous stitches. Okay, not going through the fabric at all. You're just going to thread it through a line of stitches and then cut it flush. Can you see that? Can you close? This is the wrong scissors for this, so. All right. And I went ahead and split the next thread. There's four. Now I split into two twos. I'm going to thread it up and start again. And starting is just the opposite. You have to know where you're going to begin. You flip it over. You thread it through a few stitches in the back. Make sure it doesn't pull all the way out. It's a little harder when I'm doing it with light color thread on a light color background, but I'm hoping you can see that. All right, so I've done to here. I want to keep going down. It's a one, a two, and a one. So, and it's in a straight line. Wait. I have to remember I'm going backwards. So, one. Uh, you have to make sure that if you're going to lick your thread, you don't have lipstick on it, just like I do here. That's the one. Then I'm going to do the two. If anybody notices that, I'm just... Pff, I'd be extremely surprised. Okay. One, two. It's the double row. Notice I took my thimble off. It was just doing more harm than good. I like a very soft leather thimble with a little metal plate on the front so that it feels like second skin. The quilter's thimble. And I don't have one with me. So, Alright, that was number two. And another tip. You must wash your hands when before you work on your work because um, your oils, the skin oils, We'll get on it. Yes. They will get on it, and your your uh, fabric will be dirty when it's done. All right, so I've done the four. I mean the five. It's a one, two, one, two, one. And here we have a one, two, one, two, one. You see that? One, two, one, two, one. So, I should be, I haven't done this double yet, so I should be, I need to do that next double right here. So I skip one and do two. Yep. Skip one and do two. Come on. You 
you have to be patient with it because in order not to split threads and not to split um, the fiber threads or the embroidery floss threads. You're going to have to be patient and just keep re-sticking it until it goes right in the right space. You have to be patient with this. You have to have good eyesight and good light, as you can plainly tell. All right, so now I've done this too. I can do that little one in the bottom here. That is a partial. See, we're making good progress. <laughs> you just have to keep going back and recounting to make sure that you've got it right. Um, me, uh, numbers and I just don't always get along, but I'm telling you, it, it makes it makes it worthwhile. So now we have this junction done. We have the two with the space at that bottom of the five, the other one. Then I have this one done now. Okay, it could be, it, we'd be asking for this one now. So we want to go one over and one down, which is at the bottom of this white space. One over, one down, at the bottom of the white space. And you do, you start at the bottom. I go left to right because that's the way I read, left to right. So bottom left to top right. And then to finish the stitch, bottom right to top left, always. That's the way I'm always going to cross stitch because that's the way I read. That's the way I've done it for years and years and years. All right, so now I'm up here. <clears throat> and um, I noticed that right as I began, I had the thing flipped around wrong and I put two stitches. Uh, but I'm incorporating them into, into what it is. So, all right, I have this square done now, this area, and this little bump. Um, I have two of those stitches done here. I'm going to continue over. So it's one, two. Second one is going to be under a blank. Three. One, two, three. Third one's going to go under here. Four, five, six. So I already have one and two. So three, four, five, and six I'm going to do here. Three. <coughs> four. Five, six, oops, don't, don't unthread the needle, don't tie it up at that end. It's easy to get knotted up, easy, easy, easy to get knotted up. And then I'm going to go back, I know I counted the six, the two plus the four, <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back one. Two. Get in the right hole. There we go. Sometimes I hold the thread out of the way with my thumb so that I can see what I'm doing with the next stitch. Your fingers get to get used to it. My finger underneath is holding when I after I come through is holding that thread there so it doesn't tangle up with the thread that I'm pushing through. And on top, when I do the stitch, I pull the thread out of the way and hold it with my thumb while I finish the one on top. Then I grab it with these two fingers in the back, hold it out of the way while I finish the stitch pull it through to the top. Move it out of the way, tuck it over, and there. I think I have that one more stitch to do, yes. So your fingers get used to the routine after a while. They do. Okay, now, now it's starting to look like something, isn't it? All right, so we got the top row. We've got this little chunky monkey here. We've got that bit. We've got the original bit here. We've come down the side. We've done this little loop. We've come down. We've done this little loop and this row. 
what are we missing now? Oh, how about let's pick up those three. Okay, so <clears throat> at the end of this one, we're going to come up at the end of this one. We're going to come up one and then do three. Right where this one ends, we're going to do three. Because we have to pick up the end of this now. All right, so where this ends, we're going to do three. Right above it. One. Come on now, not that. It takes a little practice to make sure you got it in the right hole. Come on. And I unthreaded my needle because I held the thread away a little too far. So, give me a second. I'm going to try not to lick it this time and get my lipstick all over it. I don't normally wear lipstick, but... I had a meeting this morning, so an online meeting. I wanted to let's look decent for. Her. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Both threads through there. No, not one and one. Both together. That's why I like it. It keeps the threads together. They say it's better to hold the thread and wiggle the needle onto the thread rather than make sure the needle is steady and the thread pushes through. kind of works that way. All right, now I need to do my third one here. All right, make sure I got it in the right way. Yes, I'm going to do that the back three. Back stitches to those three. One, two, and three. All right, all right, here we go. So now we've got, let's see, down at the bottom of the loop, we've got those three done right here. One, two, three. Now there's one that's on the end of that, that's under that second one in. So that's the one I'm going to do right now. See where it goes? Can you see where it goes? Okay, the three I just got finished. I'm going to go over one and up one. Okay. I'm going to go over one and up one. And it should, and it does, uh, wait a minute. I'm in the wrong space. Doing it upside down, that's why. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to make sure that it comes, that it meets the other stitch that's already there at the right place. And it does. Here we go. There we go. Oh, ho, ho. There we go. We're over here. Now I'm going to do the one that puts these two together. And it's right on top of the last stitch in that line. All right, so I want to do that right on top of the last stitch in that line. And it'll connect to those two. Now, I'm not making big decisions as to where I'm putting as to where I'm starting, like, okay, this is the one I'm doing next, and this is the one I'm not doing next. I mean, you could start on the top line and then just do every row at the same time. And I like to do that. When I get down to this part, I'm going to count the whole row and go back and forth the whole row rather than doing this little piecemeal stuff because it's easier. I, this just seems to be, there's no rhyme or reason to how many stitches are in the middle. Uh, just to make it look like a little curly, you know, the hot steam that comes off of your cup of tea. So, anyway, I've closed that loop. I've done the one, the two. 
All right? That's the three. But it looks like there's another little loop that comes off of here. So we're here right now. Our stitch, our last stitch was up here. I'm going to go down two and over one, and then I'm going to two, two right on top of each other. See where that is? You see where my needle is pointing? Right here. Oops, there we go. This area right here. I'm going to go over. I'm going to do those two. When I've done those two, I'm going to come over and do this one. Okay? So, that is, again, um, that's where I ended up. So I need to pick up those two. And it's one away from that one, so it's here. <clears throat> All right. That's a one. See, now I'm used to doing it the other way. I have to have the stitches going the same way all the time. All right. And again, you end at the top of the stitch. Finishing off the top of the stitch. Now we've got those two. Now, this is going to start over a little bit to fill in that gap between these two. So it's going to come underneath. And we're going to do those two right there. I heard you. I heard you say, wait, 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 wrong hole again. I heard you. Those two. End on the top. Alright. Now you also have to make sure you're not pulling too tight. You're just pulling enough to get the stitch to lay flat. If you pull it tight, things are going to pucker. That's another reason why the fabric is stiffer than, than your regular everyday house fabric because um, it, it would pucker if it didn't have some stiffness to it. All right, so now I've come around. Now I've come around here. Where should I go next? Where would you go next? You have this complete line done. And one there. Where would you go next? Hmm. It's easier to start for me on the left. So I think I'm going to do this one, maybe. No, I'm going to do this and come back, then I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to start this line. That's what I'm going to do. So I start one underneath, <clears throat> and it should leave three blank. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. One underneath, and then three underneath the blanks. So that's what I'm going to do. One underneath the last one on this row. And then three more underneath the blank area. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat. I'm in a room with a fan and a very dry atmosphere. Three. 
and finish the fourth one off. Four. There. Now you can see it takes a little time to do it, but it's looking good. It's looking like that smoke. All right. Now we've got that bump here. And why do I have more than three there? Because I need one, two, one, two three, this one. It's one skipped one from this side and three skipped from that side. And they're number two of that top. So let's do that one next. Okay, so we're... So we will have one empty on one side and three empty on the other. Okay. There. All right now. There we go. Again, we get back to the chart. We've done this part now. So we have one empty on one side and three empty on the other. So we're here. This is our last stitch. It's easy now to start here and do this section. Okay? And really, you can go all the way across and pick up this one. Now we can go all the way back and across on those rows to the bottom. So, I'm going to start under the empty one, here under this one, and it should end under the first of this one. But let's count to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's count as we go on this. Let's see. One under the blank one. Two under the one that's already there. Three under the next blank one. Four the next blank one. Five the last blank one. And six under the one that's already there. That's perfect. It worked. And then you come up and come backwards. You roll that back. Or did I want to go further? No. No, I didn't. You yeah, did. Yep. I'll go back and pick that up now. It was supposed to be skipping one over. I did these right here. I was supposed to skip two and then do one. No, skip right here. Right, right, right there. Yep. Do those six. Skip two and then do one right underneath that last one. So that's what I'm going to do now. Your thread on the bottom is going to, maybe not, um, it's not going to reflect the same beauty as the top, for sure. But you need to keep um, keep a careful eye on it so it doesn't get too bulky in the middle. All right, and I did that one. Now I'm coming back. Uh, coming back on the big line, even though I skipped one in between. Okay. and six. Perfect. All right. Check it back against the chart. That's what we've done. We've done this six, skipped two, and done one, and came all the way back. So we're here. We do one directly underneath that one, skip three, and then do one, two, three, four, five, and it should land under this one. 
So that's what we're going to do. One, skip three, and then five. One directly underneath. Skip. One, two, three. Hit the fourth one and do five. One, two. I'm noticing my thread's getting a little short. Three. and five and it's directly under that last one which is exactly where it's supposed to be <laughs> get the same five back again I'm noticing that my thread is getting a little short we will have to take care of when we get to the other end. Kits should be giving you enough thread that you, they know you need some room at the end for knots and things like that. Not knots and kind of cross stitch, but if you did embroidery, they would give you enough thread to get your work done plus some. You'd have to have maybe 15, 20% more thread so that you would be able to finish. All right, now this thread is getting pretty pretty close to not being able to continue. All right, so how big is the next row? So we've got this big chunk done and this big chunky monkey done right here. We're back here at this thread. So now we do two, skip one, two, skip one, three. Two, two, and three. And that should end us up underneath that first one again. The first one and the last one. Two, two, and three. So I'm going to do. Come on. Two. Skip one. Two. Should go in nice and easy. Skip one and three. Yep, it'll work. It'll work very well. One, two, three. All right, so now I don't really have enough thread to go back the other way. I'm going to tuck it in to the row below it so it does not interfere with what I'm doing now. Pull it through, cut it off, thread the next hunk in. In, under, over, and through. Push the needle into the thread. Don't push the thread into the needle. Make sure your needle... The <laughs> I would help if you have the, the right end <laughs> of the needle. You can't push it through the needle if there's no hole in that end of the needle. Here we go. I'm going to keep trying until I get it right. Push the needle into the thread. It squishes it a bit, but it works better. Get both of them. Yeah. Ta-da. All right. Fold it over. Take another sip of tea to wet your throat. All righty. And back down. I'm going to have to do the, bat, the row back. So... I need to thread it through the ones below. 
making sure I'm going to start at the right end here. Okay. Pull it almost all the way through. Hold it under. There we are. And I'm going to go backwards again. Um, plunk. Push it over. One. I thank you for joining me today. I'm going to finish this smoke, and you'll see it's you finished. I'm going to keep going back and forth each row. I'm going to count it. I'm going to stitch only the ones that are colored on the pattern, and line by line until I reach the bottom. I will show you when I get down to the bottom. And then we will say our, we will say our good nights, good days, good afternoons. All right, so let me get back to the end of this row. Number two, two, and three, with one in between each. There we go. Don't forget to like and subscribe. On your way out, hit the little bell that um, says you want to see more of this kind of video that you'd want to see the progress on this bookmark I'll be finishing this up and come right back to you shortly okay hang on back again now just to wrap things up I wanted to show you how the two pieces look next to each other And they look pretty similar. Now you have a choice to go down or to go up. Uh, going down is easier because you're ending at the top of a stitch. So that going down, it's easier to start and you end on the top of the stitch. The next row, you end on the top, you know, that kind of thing. If you go up, you're ending at the top of the stitch. And if you start the exact same place the last one did, you're starting at the bottom of the next stitch. So you have a tricky, um, a tricky way to get that started on the way up. Now, the reason why you start in the center, it's not so much of a big deal in something this size, something that's going to be for yourself and only you. It is a big deal if it's a big, a big uh, piece of fabric. Uh, I will at some time show you some of the pieces I've done. There are a few that you can see if you look back. Um, but I have I've got a good number down at, um, uh, at, at stored in another place, and I can show them to you once I get them out. But uh, right now, if you you do it something a bigger piece, and then you're off a few rows, it's going to look off center. It's going to look odd, um, and it's hard to recover from that when you when you start. So starting in the center is always for me. It's always easier. So, I would be going up and choosing the next color. I might choose this one darker blue and then the medium blue. And then the darker blue will continue up here. So I probably start with the medium blue, use the darker blue up, do this darker blue, then finish up with the lighter blue, and then go on to the tan at the top. Um, okay, so that's how I'm going to continue it. I will show you the next time. Um, changing colors is just the same as changing the, the thread when you get to the end of your needle. You just turn it around, sneak the back of the thread through the back of the stitches, and come up where it's supposed to be. That's all that is, just doing it with the other color. Okay? Alright, so I will see you next time, and we'll continue the project. I'll show you how much I get done uh, in the meantime. Bye, divas. Bye-bye.